Meanwhile, uh, will stocks drop if Republicans sort of fumble the ball on health care? House Energy and Commerce Vice Chairman Congressman Joe Barton voted yes to the plan in his committee. But Congressman, uh, what happens if something goes wrong and you can't get enough of your own GOP colleagues uh, to get on board here? Well, it's, we're using what's called regular order, which is we mark it up in the committees of jurisdiction um, because it's a reconciliation package. In other words, we are changing entitlement spending. You go to the budget committee, that puts the two bills together. Those go to the rules committee, and the rules committee brings it to the floor. It is amendable on the floor. I think it should be amended. I think it's a good first step. Uh, it does save some money. It does eliminate some of the federal mandates. Uh, but I think it could save more money and eliminate more mandates. So we'll just have to see as the process goes forward. Is that the selling point? Uh, two weeks ago, the selling point was quality care, uh, because we know a lot of people who were even covered uh, is a dis disingenuous in a sense. They couldn't afford the dedu deductibles. They lost their doctors already. So it really wasn't uh, about health care anymore. Uh, so is the new, is the new shift going to be how much money this saves the American taxpayer? I don't think we've, to use your phraseology, I don't think we've changed the ship. Uh, we want uh, affordable health insurance uh, without the mandates where the individual makes the choice uh, what's best for them and their family, and hopefully they'll be able to choose something that's better than what they have today under Obamacare, costs less, and is a uh, better quality. So well, I don't think we've changed that message. Uh Tax credits, that's been a, a sticky issue within the Republican Party. The Freedom Caucus and more cons fiscally conservative members of the GOP have an issue with that, saying it's just a euphemism for subsidies. Uh, it's, it's at the crux of one of the problems that they've had with Obamacare from day one. Can that be worked out? I think it can be worked out. Uh, you have a tax credit, which is if you are working and actually paying income tax, uh, then you get a credit against your, t your income taxes. If you're working but you're not working enough or paid enough that you owe tax, it becomes refundable. In other words, we would give you some money that you would then have to go and purchase health insurance. I think the Republicans that have a problem have a problem with the refundable tax credit. Of course, if you go back and look at some of our bills in the past, our bills being Republican bills, uh, most of them have had some sort of a tax credit in them. Although part of the problem, too, though, is uh, any, any sort of tax credit slash subsidy brings the federal government deeper into health care insurance rather than pushing it away from it, which I think is the ultimate goal for some, some, some Republicans who, who think that the government is too deeply involved in the daily lives of the average American already. Well, I'm one of those Republicans that agree with what you just said. This does eliminate the employer mandate, this being the bills, the two bills that we've just passed out of committee. It eliminates the employer mandate, eliminates the individual mandate, and it partially eliminates what's called the essential benefits package, which is telling insurance companies what they have to provide. It doesn't totally eliminate that, but it does partially eliminate that. So it, it is a step in the right direction, uh, getting the government out of all these mandates. Before I let you go, sir, uh, Medicaid uh, is a sticky issue as well, of course. Uh, you've got a lot of states uh, that we would call red states. Uh, in uh, Ohio, 454,000 people who've taken that Medicaid expansion. Uh, Iowa, they've taken a Medicaid expansion. And the list goes pretty, pretty much on and on. And that's where you have Republican senators and, and governors, of course, who are really concerned uh, about this coverage fading away or going away. Well, I'm on the side. In fact, I have an amendment that I offered it at committee and withdrew, but I'm hopeful that it'll be made in order at the Rules Committee to either be included in the bill or offered on the floor would, uh, would end the expansion of the Medicaid expansion states at the end of this calendar year, in other words, January the 1st, 2018. And it would require that the super subsidy, super match, which is somewhere between 100% and 95%, go back to the normal match, which is around 60%. In other words, the federal government pays 60 and the right. states pay 40 uh, in six years. My amendment. We're, you know, it hadn't been scored by the CBO, but the Barton Budget Office scores that it would save in the neighborhood of $100 billion. It'd be real savings, 
we never promised this mandatory expansion, we the Republicans. Right. And right. some Republican states did take it. They did. And, and now they don't want to give it up. But the bill that we passed that President Obama vetoed two years ago eliminated that Medicaid well, expansion, which is for healthy young adults yeah. uh, in two years. So sir, that to your is point, the difference. To your point, sir, uh, they were warned <laughs> and they took it because 100% reimbursement is really juicy until it runs out. Thank you very That's much. Right. I really appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you, sir.